Hello friends, this video on life processes part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with ba this basic dis uh, introduction on respiration, let us now talk about the types of respiration. There are two types of respiration, aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic, the word aero, it means air. So respiration which happens in presence of air. Air is oxygen. So that is respiration which takes place in presence of oxygen is known as aerobic respiration. And aerobic is just the opposite. That means the respiration which takes place in absence of oxygen is anaerobic respiration. So you might have got this misconception that oxidation of the assimilated molecules because we have this term oxidation, it should always need oxygen, but it is not like that. Oxidation of food molecules can take place even without oxygen. So we will have a look at that when we talk about anaerobic respiration. So let us first talk about the aerobic respiration. Here oxidation of food releases energy and oxidation of food takes place in presence of oxygen. So let us look at the process of aerobic respiration step by step. So let us look at each of the steps. So the first step that happens is glycolysis. So what happens in glycolysis? It occurs in the cytoplasm of a cell. We are all aware of the terminologies, right? Cytoplasm is nothing but the fluid matter present in the cell. So it occurs in cytoplasm. For this glycolysis step, no oxygen is needed. So here we do not need any oxygen. So this step is something which is common to both aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. So in both of them, first of all what happens is in the cytoplasm, one molecule of glucose gets converted into two molecules of pyruvate. What is pyruvate? It is nothing but pyruvic acid. So what happens? A glucose molecule that is C6H12O6, this glucose molecule which is a 6 carbon molecule because there are 6 carbon present in this. So it, it gets converted into a little simpler form. In pyruvate we have 3 carbon molecules. So the structure of pyruvate looks somewhat like this. So how many carbon we have? We have here 3 carbon. So pyruvate is a 3 carbon molecule. Now along with that, there is a net gain of two ATP molecules. So two ATP molecules are also produced here. So actually four ATP molecules are produced, but in this process, two of the ATP molecules are utilized by this six carbon molecule. So as a result, the net ATP yield is two ATP molecules. As I mentioned before only that the energy which is released is in the form of ATP molecules. So the first step in aerobic as well as anaerobic respiration is that the glucose which is a 6 carbon compound gets converted into a 3 carbon compound. So one molecule of glucose gets converted into two molecules of pyruvate. So that means the uh, compound became little simpler. Right? And at the same time, some energy is also released. That is, some two ATP molecules are released. So now what happens to this pyruvate? This pyruvate which was created in the cytoplasm will now move to the mitochondria. You remember what is mitochondria? It is the powerhouse of a cell. It is a cell organelle where actually energy generation takes place. So this pyruvate will move to mitochondria and in mitochondria it will lose carbon dioxide and thereby form acetyl coenzyme A. So what happens? So this is the pyruvate. So this pyruvate in presence of an enzyme called coenzyme A, what will happen? It will release one carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide will be released. And if carbon dioxide is released from here, so CO2 is gone. So what is left with? The acetyl group is left. So that means this acetyl group is left. So this acetyl group will combine with this enzyme called coenzyme A and it will form acetyl coenzyme A. So you understood? This pyruvate in presence of an enzyme called coenzyme A 
it will lose carbon dioxide so the remaining is the acetyl group this acetyl group will combine with coenzyme a and it will form acetyl coenzyme a so we call this as acetyl coenzyme a so this acetyl coenzyme a is formed so where is acetyl coenzyme a formed it is formed in the mitochondria now the next step so this is my step this glycolysis was step one Krebs cycle is the step two and this is an intermediate step between one and two so in Krebs cycle it occurs in the matrix of mitochondria so you remember what is mitochondria the yellow colored structure which you see inside this cell that is mitochondria so if you look at the structure of mitochondria in detail you can see what is matrix matrix is again this blue colored thing that is the fluid which fills the space inside mitochondria that is matrix this outside membrane which is shown in red color that is the outer membrane this is red colored border is the outer membrane and this yellow colored border outside the matrix that is the inner membrane right so the Krebs cycle occurs in the matrix of mitochondria that means within this blue colored structure so what will happen here this acetyl coenzyme a which was formed before this acetyl coenzyme A will get oxidized in presence of oxygen. So that means acetyl coenzyme A in presence of oxygen. So what will it form? It will form carbon dioxide plus two ATP molecules plus some hydrogen carrier molecules plus some hydrogen carrier molecules. So here we are not going into the very much detail of each of these equations because there are other molecules also which are involved in these equations but at this level I don't want to make things complex so that is why I am giving you uh, a rough idea about how the things happen in aerobic respiration so in your higher classes you will learn about these equations in even more detail so for now you can just see that this acetyl coenzyme A in presence of oxygen will give two molecules of ATP it will form carbon dioxide and some hydrogen carrier molecules will also be formed. So what is the total ATP yield here? Two ATP molecules are again produced here. So in glycolysis, two ATP molecules were produced. Again in Krebs cycle, two ATP molecule was produced. So now you can see that in this step, oxygen is needed and that is why it is aerobic respiration. Now what happens? What is the third step? The third step is electron transport. What do I mean by electron transport? Now what this process takes place in the inner membrane of mitochondria. That means in this membrane, the yellow colored structure. So what happens here? The hydrogen carrier molecules which were produced in the previous step. What are those hydrogen carrier molecules which were produced? They were only NADH and FADH2. A lot of NADH molecules are produced. So we will not go into the detail of these molecules. So you just understand that the hydrogen carrier molecules which were produced in the previous steps, what are they? They are actually, they actually have high energy hydrogen atoms. That is why they are called hydrogen carrier molecules. That means molecules which are carrying high energy hydrogen atoms. Now these molecules are brought to electron transport system. So what happens is that these molecules start carrying electrons to the electron transport system. The high the hydrogen carrier molecules are brought into the electron transport system within the mitochondria. So this will happen inside mitochondria. In fact, it will happen on the inner membrane of mitochondria. So what will happen? The hydrogen molecules which were at higher energy levels are brought down to lower energy levels. And in this process, eventually a very large amount of energy is released. So what basically happens here is high energy high energy hydrogen molecules are brought to lower energy levels 
and during this process a lot of energy is produced so how many energy atp molecules are produced here 34 atp molecules so now you can understand how much more energy is produced in this step in the first two steps only two atp molecules are getting produced but in this step 34 atp molecules are getting produced so a huge amount of energy will get produced during this electron transport so what is the total process we can review it the first step is glycolysis where the glucose molecule which was a six carbon molecule gets converted into pyruvate which is a three carbon compound in the next step the three carbon compound pyruvate enters into the mitochondria it loses one carbon dioxide and in presence of an enzyme called coenzyme a it forms acetyl coenzyme a so this acetyl coenzyme a then enters into the matrix of mitochondria and it, in presence of oxygen it forms carbon dioxide and two molecules of ATP and a lot of hydrogen carrier molecules. These hydrogen carrier molecules are those which have high energy hydrogen atoms. Now these hydrogen carrier molecules are then brought into the electron transport system and the hydrogen atoms which were at very high energy levels were brought to lower energy levels and during this process a large amount of energy is produced and the total yield of ATP is 34 ATP molecules. So now if we combine all these steps, so what will be the overall equation for aerobic respiration? It will be glucose plus oxygen, so glucose in presence of oxygen will give CO2 plus H2O plus 36 ATP molecules. How 36? In electron transport itself we have 34 ATP molecules and in the Krebs cycle we have 2 ATP molecules. So that is 36. Now if we even include the glycolysis part which is common to both aerobic and anaerobic. So if we include that also then you can say that it is 38. So in many places you will see that it says that in aerobic respiration 36 to 38 molecules of ATP are produced. So it is 36 when you only can include the aerobic respiration part. That means when you only include the part which involves oxygen. It is 38 when you also include the glycolysis part. So this is the overall equation of aerobic respiration. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.